the Chicago Bulls have pretty much made it known that they are okay with starting the season with Zach Levine. It does not mean that people won't try to trade him still to this day. Is this a great trade solution for the Chicago Bulls and Zach Levine? You will find out soon what I'm talking about. And then to end today's show, we will talk about the Chicago Bulls that made the hoop hypes ranking that consists of 100 NBA players. Y'all know we're going to talk about it, break it all down, but you know you got to hear the music first. Come on, yeah. Gang. Shot Bulls podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on today's episode. If you're tuned in with me today, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell as well. Let's get into it. Now, we know there's a lot of things that can be said about the Chicago Boys and how they've been handling Zach Levine, but one can agree that it pretty much seems that it's apparent and it's kind of locked in stone or, or kind of written in pen per se, that Zach Levine is going to start the season off with the Chicago Bulls, and they seem like they are good with that. It doesn't necessarily mean that people won't try to still try to move Zach Levine. So we got this article coming in from Forbes that was written by Morton Stig Jensen, who believes, as challenging as it is, the Chicago Bulls and the Brooklyn Nets should explore a trade between Zach Levine and Ben Simmons. Morton did not mention if there's going to be any draft capital involved. He did mention that this helps the Chicago Bulls because Ben Simmons is on an expiring contract and the Brooklyn Nets will be getting themselves a 24 to 25 points per game scorer that has athletic ability. That is a, that is an explosive scorer if we are listening and kind of tuning in to what Morton said in the article. For me, when I'm looking at it, it says, hey, the boys got an opportunity to clear the books. And if, 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 if you do execute the trade, the logic behind it, I guess, that I'm getting from Morton is that you, you allow Ben Simmons to walk, but during his time with the Chicago Bulls, he gets to mentor Josh Giddy and help him become better on defense. Hmm, don't know too much about that. But then on the other side, the explosiveness in the, in the type of player that Zach Levine is, it kind of makes sense for the Brooklyn Nets, according to Morton. For me, it's a hell no to the idea. I don't want Ben Simmons walking around in my locker room. Now, I understand that Ben Simmons years ago was a pretty damn good player, in my opinion. Did he have his flaws? Absolutely. But he was pretty damn solid. But the problem is, is that he doesn't love basketball. He doesn't. It was the narrative that surrounded him when he was at LSU. He got to the league, balled out, got the big contract, and has been nowhere to be found ever since. Don't bring this guy in my locker room. And now when we think about everything right here and map it all out, it don't even make sense for the Brooklyn Nets. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. And it damn show isn't worth the time for the Chicago Bulls. For the Chicago Bulls right now, with the way that this team going, me personally, I will, I will go out and try to add some type of veteran that can come in my locker room to provide some type of leadership with the young team that we have. And I'm not giving up Zach Levine for Ben Simmons just to let him walk. And there is no way in hell that the Brooklyn Nets are giving the Chicago Bulls anything other than Ben Simmons. Anything other than Ben Simmons. That's why it does not make sense for the Brooklyn Nets. It does not make sense for the Chicago Bulls. The Brooklyn Nets have three first-round picks going in, in the 2025 draft. This is one of the drafts that, is, that has been said that is loaded with talent. Not saying that the Brooklyn Nets can automatically just say, we're going to give you a first-round pick because I don't necessarily believe that. But if I'm already in this weird ass spot as the Brooklyn Nets with the young talent that I have, and I'm like, bro, I'm pretty much in a rebuild after we let Mikael Bridges go. 
after releasing statements and saying that we are willing to move Nick Claxton, Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, why would I go trade for Zach Levine? To pair with a young rookie? Okay, cool. That's one thing that could potentially make sense. But now, instead of having the ability to get the money off your books with Ben Simmons' contract, you gonna, you telling me you want to add on Zach Levine's contract? Nah, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I understand we want to go out here and try to make make sense of what's going on between, you know, uh, Zach Levine and the Chicago Bulls. And we are trying to execute a trade that makes sense for both sides. This doesn't make sense for me. Because why would you add Zach Levine to this team? When you can have over a hundred million dollars once Ben Simmons walks in cap space. So a young rebuilding team, you say, hey, maybe this season we're going to fill out a couple more players. But in 2025, we're going to draft our behind off, get three outstanding players. You should be tanking for Cooper Flag or Ace. However you want to chalk it up, select three solid players. Then we use some of that cap space to bring in some good to great veterans. And you give it a run and you will be in a better spot, in my opinion. That's how I look at it. So it's a hell no to that. But I do got a question, though. It's a burning one. If this was something that would that could potentially work for the Chicago Bulls, do we trust the Chicago Bulls to execute this trade in the right way? I don't. Because how would you guys feel if the Chicago Bulls traded Zach Levine for Ben Simmons straight up? They did it already. They did it already with Caruso and Josh Giddy. And people wanted to offer the Chicago Bulls multiple first round picks for Alice Caruso. So is it crazy to ask, would the Chicago Bulls pull another stupid move and draft, I mean, and trade Zach Levine straight up for Ben Simmons? Hey, we are sending the United Center up. Stop playing with us. Because if they do that, <laughs> we whoop them. But I don't think that they are that stupid. They, they, they got their problems. I don't think they are that stupid to make this deal. Because it wouldn't make sense whatsoever. So I understand the efforts of Morton with the Forbes article trying to bring it all together and trying to move Zach Levine. But as of right now, he should be here to stay. Zach Levine right now should be here to stay, should be with the Chicago Bulls game weight, game one of the NBA season. And however long he's here is however long he's here until a better deal comes by that says trade for Ben Simmons. He does not belong in this locker room. And quite frank with you, he need to go ahead and play overseas. That's just my opinion. But. Y'all let me know down below how you all are feeling about that. But before we go, we're going to talk about the Hoops Hypes rankings. They released the rankings of the top 100 players in the NBA, and some Chicago Bulls made the list. Not too mad at it, but hey, it is what it is. When it comes to the, some of the players that made it, Nikola Vucevic came in at 89. Just to provide some context, he is right ahead of Tobias Harris at 90. Hey, <laughs> shout out to Nick Vooch one time, but hey, it is what it is. Josh Giddy came in at 72. Guess who was right behind him? Bradley Bill at 71. Josh Giddy, a better player right now than Brad Bill? Hmm. Very interesting to say the least. I ain't going to lie to you. If y'all putting Josh Giddy above Bradley Bill, I got to see what's to it this season. I do. I got to see what's to it this season because I'm like Brad Bill. I'm not a big fan of Brad Bill, but I um, yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I ain't going to argue. I ain't got no argument to defend Brad Bill. <laughs> That's just me. I'm not defending them. I just have, I'm just like, I don't know. A lot of people told me he was better than Zach, but we're going to leave that where it was at. Josh Giddy at 72. And then a few spots uh down, Kobe White came in at 70. 
He was one spot ahead of CJ McCollum, and that one I agree with. That one I agree with. No discussion. No need to argue. We know that Kobe White right now at this point, Nate, when it comes to the NBA, he's better than C.J. McCollum. Now, I'm C.J. McCollum. He ain't no scrub. He a oop. But Kobe White, as it stands right now, is better than C.J. McCollum for me. And then you drop down a couple spots. The last Chicago Bull to make the list was Zach Levine, of course, coming in at 62. That was one spot ahead of Austin Reeves and one spot behind Kyle Kuzma. Now, this is the argument. I don't think Kyle Kuzma is better than Zach Levine. I don't. You can I who feels like Zach uh Kyle Kuzma is better than Zach Levine? Please let me know and why. I just don't necessarily see it. I see a more explosive score in Zach Levine. I see a better three-point shooter in Zach Levine. I mean, I would say Kyle Kuzma probably got him on a, the offensive side, but if we're talking about defense, I, both of them stink. So <laughs> both of them stink. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, but it's not my list. It is what it is. I understand you can't rank Zach too high because he only played, what, 25 games last season? No arguments for me. No arguments for me. But, hey, that is it for me today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode. Before you get up out of here, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as well. Thank you all so much. Make sure you always see red. And you all already know, I'm going to catch you all on the next one for the show. Cognac. Cognac. Gang.